Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's going on, fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is episode number 12. You know what time it is. It's time for you to try these two questions for today on your own. If you're thinking, Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet that you're talking about, click the link below or somewhere around this video and you will see where you can download the worksheets that you need for this episode and the other episodes in the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. So now's the time. Go ahead and pause this video, try number one and number two on your own and come on back to check your work. All right, everybody, welcome back. Okay, before we even break down the question, you know I like to go ahead and just take a peek and guess the question type. It helps me to get the right mindset going. For this one, I see select all real quick, and I also see five answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It is a multi-select, multi select meaning that there is most likely going to be more than one answer choice all right now that we know what kind of question it is let's go ahead and break it down now there's a lot of words going on here so i'm just going to read the first time just to get the gist of the problem okay so it says will and carlton will and carlton each bought a pizza the pizzas are the same size will cut his pizza into six slices Carlton cut his pizza into eight slices and ate two slices. In all, Will and Carlton ate seven twelfths of one pizza. Select all of the following statements that are true. First of all, before we even start breaking down this question, the gist is we have two people, Will and Carlton, and what are they doing in this problem? Yeah, they're eating pizza. Okay, now that I know that, I'm going to mark up my text and draw this out to help me understand. Okay, so we have Will and we have Carlton and they each bought a pizza. A means that they each bought one pizza each. So here is Will's pizza. Here is Carlton's pizza. I'm going to put a W here for Will and a C for Carlton, okay. The pizzas are the same size. Let's use our imagination and pretend that these two pizzas are the same size. Will cut his pizza into six slices. I'm gonna go ahead and break this in half and then make it three on this side and three on this side because three plus three is six. All right, got that one. Carlton cut his pizza into eight slices. So I'm noticing that Carlton's slices are a little bit smaller than Will's slices. And we also know that Carlton ate two of his slices. To show that he ate two of them, what I'm gonna do is leave two of them empty and shade in the rest to show that they are still there. So here's the two that he ate. And I can even write 
eight there. Altogether, in all, Will and Carlton ate seven twelfths of one pizza. So actually, we're going to be considering the part that we did not shade in. So we need to be kind of careful on how we do that. You may have modeled this differently. This is just how my brain is thinking about it. The very first thing I'm noticing is we know what Carlton ate, but we do not know what Will ate. But we do have some fractions here. We know that Carlton ate two of the eight slices, right? And we do know our denominator for Will. We know how many slices was his broken up into? Six, right? So our denominator here is six. What we don't know is how many pieces Will ate. So I'm going to make a box right there. But we know when they both ate them together, in all they ate seven twelfths. Sorry, that's kind of slanted. So some of my answer choices say that Will ate more pizza than Carlton, that Carlton ate more pizza than Will, that Will ate two slices, Will ate eight slices of pizza, and Will and Carlton ate the same amount of pizza. So before I can do that, first I need to figure out how many pieces that Will ate. So to do that, I'm seeing that I'm adding fractions. And I know that when I add or subtract fractions, my denominators must match. When you add or subtract, your denoms must match. And they are not matching right now. I've got six, I've got eight, and I've got 12. So I actually have three that I need to figure out what is the LCD for that, the least common denominator. And if you're like, Ms. McCarthy, I didn't even learn how to do any of this, or I don't, or I did learn it, but I did not master this yet, I want you to stay tuned to the end of the episode because I have tons of videos on adding and subtracting fractions. I will point you in the right direction at the end of this episode, so stay with me, okay? All right, so we have a denominator of six, we have a denominator of eight, we have a denominator of 12. Let's count by sixes. Count by eights and count by twelves. Hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, twelve, and eighteen. Twenty-four and thirty. Let me stop there and see if I can get a match. Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, sixteen, twenty-four. There's a match. Thirty-two, forty. I'll stop there. And now twelves. I got this feeling, the 12s are great, 1224, gonna stop right there because I have a match. I see 24, 24, and 24 as the common denominator for all three. So I'm going to rewrite this equation right here using 24 as a denominator. 24, 24, 24. Now, how did I get from six to 24? I multiplied by four. So that means whatever this is times four will be my numerator there. Eight times three gets me to 24. Same on the bottom, same on the top. So two times three is six. 12 times what equals 24? 12 times two. Same on the bottom, same on the top. So now we have 14 24ths. So let's make sense of this. Will, we still don't know the number of slices. We also have to keep in mind though, these are not the original slices. We're gonna have to throw them back into the pizza. We know that Carlton ate two eighths, which is equivalent to six twenty-fourths. We know that together they ate seven twelfths, which is equivalent to 14 twenty-fourths. So I know the total that they ate. I know what Carlton ate. So because I know the total and I know a piece of it and I'm just trying to find the other part, that means I can subtract. So 14, 14 24ths minus, it might be helpful if you can see it, minus 6 24ths or the total minus what Carlton ate will give us what Will ate. So what is 14 minus 6? It is 8. Okay, so that means that Will ate 8 24ths of pizza. Okay, now let's go back though because he originally only had six slices. So let's convert these back. What times four will give us eight? Two, right? Two times four gives us eight. So that means that we'll eight two sixths of the pizza. And this is what the shaded part is what re is remaining. The empty part are the blanks. Okay, so now that we have that information, we also have to keep in mind going into this that Will's slices are a little bit bigger. So Will, 
when he eats two slices, those are bigger pieces than what Carlton ate. Even though they both ate the same slices, they are not equal slices that they ate. Does that make sense? All right, this says select all, so we're going to try all. We're going to solve all. Select all of the following statements that these guys are right here that are true. So choice A says, Will ate more pizza than Carlton. Well, we did say that Will's slices were bigger. He ate two bigger slices than what Carlton ate. So is this true? Yes, it is. And we have the work to back it up. I'm gonna mark A, but I'm not done. I need to go through all of these answer choices here and either keep them or eliminate. It's a multi-select question after all. Carlton ate more pizza than Will. Well, we just proved that wrong. They both had the same number of slices, but Carlton's were smaller, so he actually ate less. If this said less, it would be true, but we can eliminate it. C, Will ate two slices of pizza. That's true, right? We proved that. Let's mark that. Will ate eight slices of pizza. Ah, here he ate eight out of 24 slices if we cut those into little tiny slices, but really he only cut it into six. We were just making these fractions equivalent. So no, he did not eat eight slices, he ate two. And Will and Carlton ate the same amount of pizza. They ate the same number of slices but the slices were not equal, right? So no, that's not true. So your correct answers here would be A and C. Let's go ahead and try number two. Okay, number two. I'm looking real quick to identify the question type. I'm seeing these boxes with multiple choice kind of answers in them. And I know that this is an editing task. I'm going to have to basically read some statements and fill in the blanks. Okay, let's read it just to get the gist of what's going on. Jeffrey bakes a cake for the Banks family. He has two thirds cup of sugar in a mixing bowl. After adding more sugar to the mixing bowl, Jeffrey says that he has five eighths cup of sugar. And then we're gonna complete this and we'll get to this part. So let's just understand what's going on. We've got somebody named Jeffrey. He's baking a cake. He puts some sugar into the bowl. He adds some more sugar and then makes a statement about that, okay? So Jeffrey is baking a cake here. Now let's go ahead and read, mark up our text and draw it. Jeffrey bakes a cake for the Banks family. He has two thirds cups of sugar in a mixing bowl. Okay, so here's Jeffrey. And I'm gonna make this square or this rectangular bowl and say that he has two thirds cups of sugar. So let's say this, this is a measuring cup and he has two thirds of a cup of sugar. After adding more sugar to the mixing bowl, so he puts in some more, he adds more sugar to it, and now says that he has five eighths. And Jeffrey says that he has five eighths of a cup of sugar after adding some more in there. Okay, all right, so now let's see what we need to do with this. It says, complete the statements below to determine Jeffrey's mistake. Oh, so he has his mistake. Fill in the bubble before the correct phrases. All right, so let's figure out what's going on here. Somehow he makes a mistake. So we know he had two thirds cup of sugar. We know that he adds more sugar. I'm guessing that this five eighths right here is a mistake and let's see why. I'm gonna compare these two fractions real quick. Here's a model of what two thirds looks like and here's a model of what five eighths looks like. And I can tell from my model, now my model is definitely not perfect. I can tell that my five eighths, it appears as though it's a little bit smaller than two thirds. You see here how this line right here, it doesn't go quite as far as the two thirds. I'm gonna use cross multiplication to check these two fractions out. Two thirds, five eighths. Cause these are so close right here with my model. Let me cross multiply to see. So to do that, I'm gonna multiply three times five, which is 15, and eight times two, which is 16. Ooh, they're real close. Since 16 is greater than 15, that means that two thirds is actually greater than five eighths. So here's what the problem is. He has two thirds cups of sugar. If he adds more sugar, how can he have less, right? Because two thirds is greater than five eighths. 
If you think about it like this, it's like saying, if we think about it like a whole, let's say that he has two cups of sugar and then he adds more and has one cup of sugar. That doesn't make sense, right? That's kind of the same thing this scenario is saying. So let's see. Jeffrey is incorrect because five is not a multiple of two. I don't really think that has to do with anything because two is less than five. Well, two is less than five, but that's not here. Our two thirds is greater than five eighths. So that's not right. Jeffrey is incorrect because five eighths is less than two thirds. Yes. Let's take a look at the second one. After adding more sugar, it makes sense that he has, so we need to find, so when he does add more sugar, what fraction would make sense? One half, two thirds, or six eighths? Well, I know that halfway would be like right here with my sugar, or if I'm looking at it here, it would be like right here. Okay, halfway in between. Two thirds is still more, so half, half a cup of sugar does not make sense. It does not make sense that he starts with two thirds, adds more, and then still has two thirds. No, but six eighths is greater than two thirds. I can prove that with cross multiplication. Three times six is 18. Eight times two is 16. And now we've got a greater fraction, six eighths. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark C. All right, that's kind of a challenging question there. That's why I wanted to do this one. And for this kind of question, you might wanna go back and rewatch this again, just to, until it clicks for you, okay? That's the amazing thing about watching a video. You can always rewind and go back and watch it again. All right, everybody, now is one of my favorite parts of the video, and that's where I get to send you to more practice because this is just a test prep review. And you might be thinking, oh, I really need some more help with adding fractions or subtracting fractions. And if you need help with that, there's a link below for McCarthy Math 155 check out unit six. That's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with fractions. Just find the videos that you know that you need help with, watch them and go. And you'll see a link below that'll take you there. And you do need to become a member in order to access these videos. However, everybody can get their hands on a seven day free trial. You just gotta go to the website and you'll see where to go. I've also created a series a few years back called How to Pass the Math FSA. I built this series when the FSA was a computer-based test. It's not anymore, it's a paper-based test, which is why I've updated the questions here on the Math FSA Bootcamp. However, the how to pass the Math FSA questions are still very helpful. So I'm going to include this standard right here, the link to that. So check that out if you know that you need some more practice. You heard me sing in a little bit of the multiplication mashup in today's lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and include the link to that too. I also encourage you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you found today's video to be helpful, if you could go ahead and smash that like button for me, I would so appreciate it. Not just for me, but for my mission, because you see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as I possibly can. So when you smash that like button, you're letting other people know that this is a video to watch and it gives them a safe place to learn. Thank you so much, guys. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before you go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice, okay? And I will see you all on the next episode.